Hello everyone, welcome to Bearware the Terrible. So today we are going to be reviewing a new deck called Belted Blow. A better name would be Digital Crash. So it features Rampardus's Wild Crash, which knocks out the opponent's active Pokemon if it's a basic Pokemon. And then it is supported by uh, Initialize, Porygon Z's Initialize which devolves each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon by putting the highest stage evolution card into his, his or her hand uh, upon evolution, upon when you put your hand, when you put Porygon Z from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon. So we can either evolve it, <coughs> sorry, we can either evolve it with a rare candy or we can evolve it uh, stage by stage uh, or a Porygon. So the bad thing about this is it happens only once. So the ev the devolution happens uh, upon as you put the card from your hand onto the Pokemon. So it happens only once. So we have to use this Porygon Z very sparingly. And we The devolution happens uh, upon as you put the card from your hand onto the Pokemon. So it happens only once. So we have to use this Porygon Z very sparingly. And we don't have a Gladian in this deck, as you can see. No Gladian. Which means if these are in our prize cards, we cannot retrieve it. We have to basically Wild Crash and or, or Clean Hit, which is a not, not bad of a, an attack. We have, we have to basically kill as many opponents as uh, as many Pokemon uh, defending Pokemon as we can until we get the prize cards until we get Porygon Z in our prize card, which is not a very good deal because it might not even be in one of the uh, first few prize cards that we draw. But that's not the main point. The main point is as long because we have three of it. You know, usually usually if we have three stage two, at least one would be in the deck. You know, unless we are severely unlucky you know <laughs> and then another uh card that i use is this change close so the reason is called belted blow is because i have karate belt karate belt allows you to use uh wild crash for only two fighting energy attack costs as you can see wild crash is very heavy it takes three fighting energy which means double colorless or or uh you can't use double colorless, you can't use double dragon, you can't use doubles. You know, there is a double fighting, but it only works for Team Magma. So this is not a Team Magma Pokemon, it doesn't work. There is no tool cards that allow you to change it into Team Plasma, because there is a tool card that allows you to change a Pokemon into a Team Plasma. It's called a Team Plasma Badge, but there's no such thing as a Team Magma Badge. 
So the bad thing about this is there's no such thing as double. You can't double. Uh, you can't double charge this card with double energy, uh, unless you use a counter energy, which is uh, which I don't quite like because it's a special energy and it's it is very conditional. You know, it's it's basically the same as karate belt because if you use a karate belt and you attach uh, two energies, you can attack. If you don't use a karate belt, you attach a fighting energy and, and a counter energy, it's basically two energies, you know? The bad thing about uh, counter energy is that you need a Guzma Hala to, to get, or a computer search to get that card out. Whereas with this one, I only need a Skyla, which also allows me to get my stadium cards, my evolution incense, all my other item cards. So Skyla is more is more effective, you know, to allow this one to be drawn with Skyla, which would be much more effective than if I have a double, if I have a counter energy. And then I have a, uh, so that's the reason it's called Belted Blow. It's because we have a Karate Belt and the blow is the Wild Crash. You know, Wild Crash is the, the you know, dam the final, the, the death blow. So, um, and then we have this change close, uh, which is called, sorry, which is, uh, which allow, allows you to change the tool cards, you know, which allows you to put a tool card attached to one of your Pokemon back into your hand, but it only works once per turn. So if uh, I have two of it, which means if one of it is in our prize card, at least we can change it once. So the reason I need a change close is because I have another tool card called focus sash. So this is a bit of a cheating here, guys because uh it's not a fighting type as we know it's a rock type uh rampardos is not a fighting type but because it's all meshed together into this uh this symbol so we get to use the fighting tool cards so it's actually cheating because this is a fighting is for fighting pokemon they should be more specific in the future they should say like you know if you have a resistance that is psychic type or if you you know they should basically make every Pokemon have a resistance. You know, all Pokemon should have a resistance and, you know, it makes it more specific because if you have a resistance that is, uh, I think rock is resistant to lightning. If you have a resistance of lightning, then you are a rock type. If you are resistant to, uh, what's fighting resistant of? If you are resistant to normal type, which is flying, you know, sorry, no, <laughs> fighting type is afraid of flying type. Fighting type is resistant to, I can't remember, but anyways, if you're resistant to certain other types, then you're a fighting type. So basically they should be more specific with this, this card. So, um, it's, it's, it's actually a bit of a cheating, but I don't care because you know, it's to my advantage. So that's how this deck is built. This deck is built upon, uh, you know, this, this two tool cards, it makes it very, very, it really changes the whole, it really ups the game of this deck because if we use Rampardos alone without the tool cards, then it's not very effective, you know, because it has three, it needs three energies and it, it's, it only have 150 HP. And also this one, uh, it, it takes a long time to get it out, you know, but because we have research lab, it, it, it's very quick that we can get it out but we can't charge it as quickly research lab as uh when you put those pokemon from uh from your bench when you put uh your fossilized pokemon onto your bench uh your turn ends so you can't charge the pokemon on that turn you can't put energy on that pokemon on your turn you have to put it you have to put energy on the next turn so it's very slow so the reason this deck is, uh, you know, the reason I want these tool cards is because it makes it not too, not too bad with the existence of these tool cards. And then we have the regular supporters. We have uh, Marnie, we have uh, Cynthia and Sycamore and uh, where is it? Sophocles to draw four cards. So these are the drawing cards. And then we have a BD to charge uh, our energy faster. You know, and then we have a uh, evolution incense for you know evolutions, and then we have tail and flame, just in case we, we don't have many basic. By the way, this is a stage one, so we need to draw. Usually in our first hand, we would draw either a por Porygon, a Tapulili, or a tail and flame. So that's only like one, two, three, four, six cards. Six cards out of sixty 
that we need to draw in our first hand uh, to prevent the opponent from drawing extra cards. So that is very risky because usually I wouldn't draw. Uh, I would usually draw all evolution or trainer cards as well, but no basic in the first hand. So that would cause the opponent to draw more cards. Uh, uh, you know, allow them to draw more extra cards. But that doesn't matter because as long as I have this in my first turn, in my first or uh, first or third turn, uh, depending on when I go first. You know, if I go first. Then on my third turn, I get to use this one. If I go second, then on my first turn, I get to use this one. Uh, I'll explain it later because usually in my first turn, it's very unlikely that I get a research lab on my first draw. But, you know, on my first draw, I might get a Tapu Lili. Uh, uh, what do you call that? I might get a Tapu Lili in, um, in combination with other basic Pokemon. If I get a Tapu Lili only as my basic Pokemon, then I'll have to put it as my active. Then I can't use the ability. But if I have a Tapu Lily and another basic, then I can summon a Skyla to use to use it on my first turn if I go second. To use it on my third turn if I go first. So Skyla calls out my Pokemon Research Lab. And Tapu Lily allows me to call out my Skyla, which allows me to call out my research lab. And Pokemon Communication allows me to switch for a Tapu Lily, which allows me to call for a Skyla, which allows me to use a research lab. So you get the point. So I have basically uh, uh, one, two cards. Quick Ball allows me to draw Tapu Lily as well. So one, two cards, three, four cards, plus uh, Skyla, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten cards that are ten out of sixty that I need to uh, I need to draw one of these ten cards out of the sixty cards that I have in my deck in my first or second draw. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to use this one. Because I need to use this very quickly on the very first few turns. Um, so that I get to charge it and then call out a karate belt or a, a what do you call that? A focus sash and then do the, the, the death blow. So this is how the deck works. And I have two Guzma just in case and a Marnie. So I think that's too much and a rescue stretcher. Uh, let's get right into it. I don't want to speak about it too long. So the reason it's called digi Digital Crash is because, you know, Porygon Z is digital and we have the Wild Crash. Digital Crash is a better name, you guys, because it sounds, you know, it sounds badass. But Belted Blow is my uh, initial name uh, for it. And these two are the variations. We'll go through the variations after, but I'll, I'll battle first. I'll go through the variations after. But the reason it's called Intimidating Blow, this is the very first version. The reason it's called Intimidating Blow is because... Uh, it doesn't have the it doesn't have uh, Mag Ernia and it doesn't have the Karate Belt, but the reason it's called Intimidating Blow is because it uses Rampardos, Wild Crash, and Porygon Z's Initialize. So Initialize intimidates the Stage Two or Stage One Pokemon back into Basic or back into Stage One, uh, and it blows allows you which the, the intimidation allows you to. Uh, uh, one hit knockout the Pokemon, so it's an intimidating blow. It's an in, it's an intimidating knockout. Sorry about that. I'm uh, stuttering a bit. So clean hit allows you to kill a stage one if it's a uh, stage two. So usually, if it's a stage two, I just need to use initialize one to allow uh, to devolve it into a stage one, uh, and then use clean hit to kill it. If it's a stage one, then I uh, you know devolve it into a basic and use wild crash. Usually, if it's a stage two, it means the middle evolution, uh, the stage one evolution, which is usually the middle evolution, doesn't have high enough HP to, you know, to sustain, to survive the clean hit. Because clean hit does 120 damage for an evolution Pokemon. For a stage one middle evolution, it's usually less than 120. It's usually 90 or 110, something like that. You know, it's usually less than 120. So that's why initialize. We most times we only need, we only need to use initialize once. But the bad thing is, if we can't, we, if we don't have a Rampardos as our active, and you and we use initialize, then the next turn they can evolve it back. So there's no point. We need to use it on our turn. We need to use this ability on our turn and kill that Pokemon on our turn by using Guzma to draw it out or whatever. You know. So that's the that's the weakness of this deck. So let's just go right into it. Uh, demonstrate how it works. So 
sorry about the late video guys i've been spending a lot of time uh, uh creating building new decks testing them out modifying them that's why you know it's getting a bit late i'll try to post more regularly in the future so we have a top lily as our first uh, active which is not good we don't have a Skylar, we don't have a... Uh, let's put this so we can retreat the next turn. No point, but, you know, we only have nine energies, by the way. That's why we need to conserve, but I don't think they can kill it within the first few turns. Unless he use some crazy draw tactic, which appears to be the case. I think it's a first raid deck. It's a deck where they use the first raid. It's gonna, you know, keep drawing until it gets the plus power, it gets uh yeah, all the special conditions and you know the the tool cards and then the first raid. So within the first turn it gets to attack 40, whether it whether it goes first or second, he still gets to attack, you know, because it's first raid. There we go, first raid. If you go first, you can use this attack on your first turn. So he goes second, by the way. But it doesn't matter, he might kill this Tapu Lili because he has a lot of, uh, what do you call that? He might have a Diancy, which increases this to, by 20. It's smart to use this, by the way. Oh, he doesn't have a Diancy. So, Let's count. If he has a muscle band, it increase or if he has a choice band, which is better because I'm a GX, it increases it by into 70 and then add say four plus powers into 110. I think. Yep. And then poison 120. Let's say he has survivors and a Verbang City. Uh three survivors. Let's go uh four survivors, right? Assuming he has four survivors. Assuming he has a Giovanni Exile, four survivors, um, that would increase it to, sorry, I lost count. I think 110 that was, was it? 40, 70, um, uh, plus power 110, zigzagon, right. So he doesn't have survivor. Well, he could have a Skyfield survivor instead of a Verbank City. Or he could just have a Verbank City. So that's already uh, 30 plus 40, 70, 80, 90 plus plus power, 3, 10, 11, 12, 120. Oh, not enough, it's 120. Ew, that was close. Oh, you just let me one. That's the bad thing about this first raid deck, because if you can't do the first kill, then you're basically done for because that's the only the whole deck centers around that you know so if you have a basic pokemon that can't survive the first hit then he wins if you have a basic pokemon uh, if you have a basic pokemon that can survive the first hit or if you have more than one bench pokemon or if you have even just one bench pokemon then he loses so it's very it's very risky that deck I think I might be speaking too loud. So let's put a Megurnia as our active because we want to save our I probably shouldn't have put two Megurnias, but it's gonna it's gonna die anyways. We want it to die because we want to use a karate belt. So we got our Skyla, which is really good. We can call out our research lab on the next turn. Let's attach just to make him think that we are going to retreat so he can kill it and we can use our karate belt. We can't charge our Cronidos anyway, so might as well charge this just in case it doesn't get killed. Then we can retreat into our wall crash. So he's probably going to have that, uh, what's the word, that blow away bomb thing. That wheezing that attacks 40 and then 10 damage each. And the Shrine of Punishment or whatever. I hate that deck. I hate the Shrine of Punishment deck. 
but he has a guard charm Giratina, so I don't think it's that attack. He might have a Galarian Weezing. I've never seen that deck before. I've never seen anyone use that uh, neutralizing gas before. I think it's called neutralizing gas. I don't remember. So there we go. Our. Oh, I thought it's glowing because of. Uh, should I have charged my Pokemon? I don't think so. So Porygon is just for ability. We don't need to charge it. Because Zap Cannon only does 80 damage for 3 energy. And you can't attack the next turn. So basically Porygon Z is useless. Except for Initialize. Oh, and by the way, I just realized that Garbo Toxin. Because if I if they have a Garbo Toxin, my Porygon Z is useless and my Change Clothes is useless as well. But Garbo Toxin, I just realized that you need a Pokemon Tool card attached to a uh, Garboder for Garbo Toxin to work. If you don't have that, sorry, I just need to think for a while. Let's put out our Porygon so that you know we have more Porygons anyways. Uh, and it's just a stage one, so we only need to do it once. So, and it's less than 120, so we don't really need to do it. Um, anyways, a Garboder's uh, Garbotoxin doesn't work if you don't have a Pokemon Tool Crush attached to it. So if you have a Field Blower or if you have a Tool Scrapper, you scrap that Tool Cards out of that Garboder, Garbotoxin is no more. Let me get a Tapu Lili so that we have our supporter the next turn. I keep forgetting to get a Tapu Lili. I had one game where I didn't get a Tapu Lili while I have a Brick Hand. And, and I had this one. I was stupid enough not to get a Tapu Lili. Uh, I don't know what to do here. And, and because of that, I kept drawing you know useless cards and I lost the game. Anyways, uh, should I evolve? I don't think I should evolve. I don't think I should do this because I need my Tapu Lili. This is the scary thing, you know, like if, if I if I forgot and I just put out another Cronitos, I can't use my Tapu Lili until this gets killed. And he could, you know, he could use linear attack until he kills all of my Pokemon one by one. And I'll need to switch. And the moment I switch, I waste one turn of energy attachment. So it's, it's very narrow. Sometimes the game gets very narrow and you need to be very slow and steady. You can't just keep, you know, you can't just keep moving too fast. Dragapult is a ghost type, by the way. Well, you can see it in the eyes, you know. <laughs> um, I need a, oh, I can kill it now. Because I just need a karate belt, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that because it's gonna drag me. 140. Uh, he might have a. I'm just gonna do that. He might have a muscle band, which will readily kill my Rampardos. I'm gonna get the new Skyla. Or a karate belt. So karate belt doesn't work the next turn anymore because I'm gonna draw three cards. Thank God we have a karate belt. I only have two of each tool cards, so it's pretty risky, as you can see. We have another top lily, I think. Yep. Hopefully it's in our deck, and hopefully we draw it in our next turn or a supporter card. There we go. Oh, a top lily. We could call for a BD. There we go, that stupid annoying detention gas. It's annoying. Like, one damage counter? Come on. <laughs> it gets really annoying when these, these things 
could, could, could destroy your deck, could kill you, could knock you out, because it, it accumulates, you know, one damage counter and it spreads across all of your Pokemon, so you can't really do proper healing, you can't, all of your your tool cards doesn't work anymore, and you know, it's, it really messes up your entire deck. That's why people like that, that stupid wheezing so much. Um, don't know what I'm gonna do here. Uh, I, I could wild crash it, but then... Hmm... This is tricky. How much is your attack? 160 is gonna kill my Chronidos. So I'm gonna attach this one because I have a change list and there's no point anyways because I'm gonna kill it. So Karate Belt is not gonna work anymore. I think I haven't called out Skyla. I think I haven't called out. Yep, I haven't. I haven't used the support this turn. Let's use a BD. Nope, we don't have a... If we use a BD though... 120 is not gonna kill this one. So let's use a Guzma. Because if we have... Yeah. If we have a Guzma, we win. Because we have a, a what do you call that? Damn it! Uh, we have a rescue stretcher to evolve back into our Rampardos, and then we only need to Guzma to do the final clean hit, to clean hit one of this stage one Pokemon. We don't even need to initialize because it's not there's no stage two. You know, usually if it's a V Max or a or a, a GX stage one, then we need to use an initialize. Or if it's a stage 2 slash GX stage 2 or a break. A break usually we need to uh, you know initialize twice because a break uh, I think you get the point you know, because a break is a uh, stage 3 basically. Unless it's a, it's a, you know, unless it's a gold duck break or a, or a pyroar break or something like that, then it's a stage two. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit foggy. We're not gonna do that one. Oh shit! I forgot. I forgot. I can't switch. I should have switched into something else. That's the bad thing about Guzma. You have to switch. But he let us win. Um, I made a mistake there, guys. I should have, you know, uh, when the Cranitos, when the Rampardos was knocked out, when the first Rampardos was knocked out, I should have switched into something else and then used Guzma to switch back into my uh, Cranitos and then evolve and attack. You know, so Guzma comes later. I mean, I have to switch into something uh, else. I have to switch into a non Cranidos. So it's very tricky. This game, you know, it's the smallest things matter so much. Every move, almost. So we're gonna get our research lab. We have three of it. Funny story about this research lab, I had to trade a pack for it. Not a Rebel Clash pack, I traded a XY Roaring Skies pack for, I think, I can't remember what else I traded. Alright, I traded a XY Roaring Sky pack for a, a research lab and a Focus Sash, because I only have two Focus Sash. I needed three at the time, but I think I'm going to get another Rampardos. Um, I'm not gonna charge that one because it might die. Right, as I was saying, I had two focus sash, but I traded for another one because I didn't know that I needed a karate belt 
when I first tried to build this deck. So I built this deck without a karate belt, without even knowing that a karate belt exists actually. And then while I was doing a lot of trading, I started noticing that I had two karate belts and I realized that, you know, what it actually does. I thought a karate belt is just basically add damage or something, but it's, you know, it's, it lessens your attack cost, which is a huge game, game changer actually. So it was like Thunder Mountain. So we'll just wait for it to die. Hopefully it does. Because other if you use a Lysander, then we're dead. And we don't have a proper supporter to allow us to change our hands. What psychic club? For each of your psychic bench with 50 more damage or 30. Is resistant to psychic. The new resistance is minus 30, by the way. There we go, minus 30. It might just be for V, or it might, just, it might be for all. I'm not really sure. But tag teams don't have weak, uh, don't have resistance. I think so. Most tag teams don't. I don't think all of them do. So he is he is retreating because he knows the wild crash is coming. Um, I just I'm I'm just gonna do that because I have three energies. I don't need a karate belt anymore. Let's hope we get uh what's that word? Focus session next turn or a proper supporter card. Oh, we have three price cards, so we're probably gonna get a proper supporter. Yeah, there we go. Sparkles. Sparkles. The new Sparkles is called, I think, Milo? Right, Milo. Milo allows you to draw two cards for each card you discard from your hand. So basically, it's the same thing, but you get to discard only one to draw two, or you get to discard two to draw four. Whereas the Sparkles, you don't have a choice. But usually you'd want to draw four. I mean, unless you have the crucial cards on your hand, you don't want to, you know, discard the precious, the precious one that you need. But drawing two cards is basically drawing none. You know, you might as well draw none. Um, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna do my fan club because I don't need it. I don't need another Cronidos. I need my focus sash. I need my rare candy, right, I need rare candy, I need Porygon Z, I need energy, I need Karate Belt. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kill it. I can't Karate Belt the next turn, so I might as well not kill it. Because then it can't kill me. But AD is not gonna do anything. Unless you use Nasty Goo Mix. 15 damage counter. 15. 4 extra energy. Alright, uh, he's not gonna do anything. Let's just wall crash the hell out of that. We have a Guzma. But we already used the Sephocles. This is a pretty old card, by the way. Not too old, but you know, still pretty old. A sun and moon. Don't remember what the symbol is. We have a BD, but it's basically useless because of. All right, we win, I think, because we can Guzma for a tag team, and then we can switch. So poison, poison is, is the weakness of Focus Ash. If it kills us, if it does 150 damage and it's poison, then it, it's basically dead in one turn. You can't uh, focus, you know, Focus Ash doesn't allow you to uh, heal the poison, you know, it, it works 
up before the poison. It heals all the damage until it has 10 left before the poison, before the before the Pokemon checkup. So we're gonna demonstrate another time. I had a bad internet connection. It uh, cut off just now while I was having an intense battle with someone. It was getting very dramatic and all of a sudden it got cut off. Could be malicious hacking, who knows. But I'll leave it at that. So we have a pretty weird hand. We don't have Skyla, we don't have research lab, we have no means of getting a research lab. But we do have a Sophocles though. So as you can see the internet connection just got question mark again. Hopefully it goes well for this battle. Uh, if it doesn't I wouldn't record it so don't worry about that. Let's just worry about the battle. I mean if it you know if the internet connection doesn't work I wouldn't put it in the video so I'm gonna charge this one and I don't need I can rescue stretch them back so I'm gonna have to top ability this turn we don't need a tail in flame. That's to compress the deck. We don't need a tail in flame for we can change it for a tapu lily. So the reason I'm using it now is because I don't want it to kill my Porygon and let him win in his first turn. Because he could use a you can very easily, let's change it to fighting type. Probably not gonna attack the next turn anyways, but who cares. Um, <coughs> sorry guys, um, so the reason I put Tapu Lili is because he might use a Welder. You know, this deck is crazy. He might use a Welder and an Elixir and uh, attach an extra energy from his hand to attack 230. Or he might use a welder and a, a, what do you call that? A muscle band, and he might have a, a supporter, a supporting Pokemon that adds damage to attack 60 damage or something. I don't know. You know how those decks work. Very sorry, guys. It's very um, annoying the fact that they can just add damage like it's nothing. So I'm not gonna uh, draw cards because I need to save my energy. I only have nine. Some of them could be in my price cards as well. So I'm not gonna waste any more because Tapu uh, could be dead the next turn. As I said, Welder and an extra energy, he's gonna attack 230. So no point. He might even Welder and use Double Blaze. This is a crazy, crazy card. Fire decks are crazy. There we go, Welder. If he doesn't have an energy in his hand, he's probably gonna draw one. And a Charizard, oh my goodness. A great, comp a great compressor card. Trainer's meal, you know, you don't really. It's not. It, it's just. It just. It's just there to compress the deck. We're gonna have a Charizard the next turn. Hopefully, we get a Focus Sash. Then we shouldn't worry too much. There we go. Double Blaze, predictable. We have an initialize though, so I'm not sure we have this one still, so we can spare 
Not sure if we can spare one, but I'm just gonna go ahead and spare one. I could retreat anyways. So no, I can decide later. Um, we don't have a BD. If we have a BD, it's gone. We're gonna... Ah... Uh, I know he's gonna Lysander. For some reason, I have a sixth sense that he's gonna use a Lysander on it. Ooh. Let's hope we get a Megurna the next turn for a Focus Sash. And then the next turn, we switch again for a... Oh, we don't have a Focus Sash. Oh, well... We have this one, though. Another Rampardos. Let's put in another Porygon because we need them Porygons. Let's change its weakness into it's not a it's not an evolution, so there's no point. Oh, this is hard. I'm not sure if I should use this one because I'm definitely gonna have to use Tapu Lily. But this one might not die. I think I'm gonna do that. Because, you know, this one's probably gonna be dead the next turn. Or this one might be dead the next turn. Then I'm gonna have to use a Tapu Lily. Yeah, something is gonna die the next turn. A hundred percent. Because he used a double blaze and now there we go, Lysander. My sixth sense never lied to me. <laughs> ah, I wasted a karate belt. Oh well. So, uh, what are we gonna do? We have to charge our Rampardos real quick and get another Karate Belt out. By that time, he will probably have that one, so uh, I'm not sure if I can win now. We only have three prize cards. I mean, he only have three, three prize cards. Okay, ah, uh, this is really bad. So the reason I'm leaving this uh, Porygon is because I can't <laughs> switch into anything else. If I switch into Megurna, I might need it for a Karate Belt. I might have a Karate Belt the next turn. Oh, I, sh I could have switched into Rampardos actually. Because this is probably going to last one turn anyways. Unless... Oh yeah, it could last two turns. Yeah, it's better not to switch. Oh, he's gonna Lysander again. Damn it! Ah, this is impossible. Oh, thank gosh. Why did he do that? He can't double blaze again. Like, why? He probably forgot. And why would he need to use a 300 double blaze? If you have at least 3 extra fire energy, this attack does 100 more damage, and this attack's damage isn't affected by any effect on your opponent's active Pokemon. Well, this is not an effect though. This is a tool card that allows me to heal until it has 10, damage, 10 HP left. Oh dear, so we need a Guzma or... No, we can't, we don't even, not even a Guzma can help us now. Oh my goodness, this is really, really bad. 120 can't kill this. But if we have a rare candy, we might kill that. So I'm gonna charge this one. Guzma. 
There we go, we have a Grizzly, but we don't have a Karate Bout. Oh, oh. So I'm gonna do this. Hopefully we get a Rare Candy, there we go, a Rare Candy and a Porygon Z. Thank goodness we have two of that in the deck. We actually have three, I think, there we go. None in our price cards. So we evolve and we kill. Bye bye, Charizard. He might have a rare candy. And then evolve his one of his bench ones. But we're gonna try for that. I oh I should have. Oh <laughs> I should have attached my energy to my Rampardos just now. Now there is no way to do a you know clean kill to do a wild crush. Hmm, this is really really bad. So I still need to kill three Pokemons to get a to get a win. He only needs to kill my Tapu Lily, which is very easy. If he has a Guzma or a Light, if he has a Guzma, which is better. A Guzma and an energy at hand. Full scraper, shit. That fucks up my entire deck. There we go. I'm pretty sure we're gonna lose this one. Ah. Heartbreak. Heartbreak. Charizard and a switch. He's already modifying from that Nido Queen deck. The theme deck, the Charizard theme deck. All he needs to do is add this one and the right supporters and a VS Seeker. Oh actually it does quite a lot of arrange. A lot of quite a lot of modifications. Ah, oh, I can't believe this. Um what do we do? What do we do? We don't have a counter catcher. If we have a counter catcher and a karate belt, that might help. But we are dead. We are dead. We are dead. Yeah, we're dead. No point. Let's just like whatever. Let's keep crying till we win. <laughs> so that's the weakness of this deck. Um, the tool cards get discarded or it can poison itself. Uh, it, or it can get poisoned and die in the Pokemon checkup. During Pokemon checkup. Uh, and the bad thing is we only have two Guzma, we don't have a... Uh, what do you call that? We, we need too many cards basically, we need too many cards in our hand. We need a lot of tool cards in our hand, we need uh, we need to switch, we can't really switch properly. We, uh, to switch we need, we need to either wait for the active Pokemon to die, or we need to uh, waste our energy attachment. Uh, we need to waste a turn you know, to attach energy to a Pokemon that we are not going to use its attack for. So that's really, really, uh, really, really a huge disadvantage because Wild Crash is three energy, as I said. And we only have two Karate Belts, so... And it, Karate Belt only works if you have more price cards, so it's a really, really uh, conditional, temperamental deck. So what am I going to choose here? Let's choose this one. Let's go for another run. Against 18222. All numbers. Is he a robot? Are you a robot? I love Porygon, by the way. It's so creative. Porygon is like a shape of its own, jagged shape. And then Porygon 2 is like smooth shape. 
So uh, I think it's called a chamfer. A chamfer is like a you know smooth edge, not really you know, but a sharp edge. Uh, what do you call that? Not a a, a smoothened sharp edge. Slight is 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 a. It's really hard to explain, but if you Google chamfer, you'll know what it means. You know, and then Porygon two is a, a fillet. A fillet is basically a very rounded edge. And then we have Porygon Z, which is a shape of its own as well, you know. And the eyes, I love the eyes of Porygon Z. It's like a, you know, it's like a maniacal eyes. It's over digitized and hyper, uh, what do you call it, hyper computerized, uh, hyper intelligent eyes. So, Thundermon, I hate that card. I hate it. Electro Power Thundermon. See, it just does 30, 50 damage. You could. Uh, I don't even want to think about it. You could do so much damage in the, in the first turn. Uh, what am I going to take? Rampardos. Let's compress some more. Fifty. All right. Um. um, um, um. Let's dig to cranium out. Cranidos. This is Diamond and Pearl Fossil, by the way. You guys probably know, but it's Diamond and Pearl. I love Diamond and Pearl. The Pokemons are so original in Diamond and Pearl. I just love it. Porygon Z is Diamond and Pearl, by the way. Uh, and Gallade, all of the Stage 2, uh, Extra Stage 2, and the Special Stage 1, like Frostlass, and I can't remember what's the other one. There's another thing like Force Last. Stage 1, Special 1, I can't remember. But there's Dust Noir as well, and there's all, you know, much uh, more special evolution Pokemons in Diamond and Pearl. And the other fossil is Bestiodon. Bestiodon is a steel type, a shield Pokemon. This is a battering ram Pokemon. I'm not sure why I did that, but you're gonna 60 times 2, I think. Yep, it's afraid of fighting. I might not do that. 150 is not gonna kill me. 50 damage has the amount of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Yep, it's not gonna kill me. Um, unless he has an electro power. Oh my god. He's probably gonna have an electro power. Let's hope we get a focus slash. Come on, focus, damn it. Alright, let's just do that and hope for the best. We're gonna have to, um, you know, send out our McErnia. If it manages to use uh, Sky High Claws and Electro Power, this is going to attach an extra energy to his Tapu Koko. He might even bring out a new Tapu Koko to attach all of the energy from his other Pokemon to that new Tapu Koko, and then put it into his uh, shift it into the active spot. Shaman. Don't be no shame in me. Sorry, don't be shame in me or something. <laughs> Dynam motor. Mm. 
No electro power, please. No electro power. No electro. Thank you. Oh dear. Poison. So if I hit it this turn, it's gonna die the next turn. 120 is not always oh, not weak to anything, so I only attack 60. I could kill it with a wild crash, but oh, I can't kill it with a wild crash. Five five. Sixty. I'm finding something that I can kill. Hmm. I can't even evolve. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna have to do that. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. I'm probably gonna focus sash if I have one. Damn it, we don't have a focus sash. Alright, I'm just gonna do that. We can karate bell the next turn now. Oh dear. It died on our turn. Damn it. 130 is gonna kill our McErnia. McErna, sorry. The weirdest looking Pokemon. It's like so weird. A gear for a head. Like, come on. It looks weird. And there's like. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Fuel blower discarded our karate belt. A dynamotor. A dynamotor is really, really uh, dangerous. I probably should have Guzma just now to kill that dynamotor. Oh, I couldn't kill it because I don't have energy. I should probably change my Guzma into Lysanders because I can't switch my Pokemon. I'll have one Guzma, one Lysander because right now I have two Guzmas in my belted blow deck. Okay, I can kill it now, but it's not enough. How much does this attack? 160. Attach 5 basic energy cards from your discard pile of your Pokemon in any way you like. He hasn't used his GX. So I'm gonna Guzma. Guzma doesn't allow you to switch if you can't, if he doesn't have a bench Pokemon. But Guzma allows you to switch out his bench Pokemon if you don't have any bench Pokemon. So I'm gonna kill this one because it attacks 160. And I'm gonna bring out a Tapu Lili. Uh, whereas if I kill Tapu Goko, he could kill my Rampardos the next turn. Um, damn it, damn it, damn it. I'll evolve my Porygon the next turn, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I don't think... I don't know. I don't think he's gonna evolve that Dynamotor. Because Dynamotor's ability... Sorry, Electric. E Electric's ability is very useful. Oh, he used the uh, Electro Power. Damn it! We're, we're done for, guys. We need one. We need a turn to get our Cranidos out, and we need two more turns to charge that Cranidos. And by that time, he's already taken three prize cards. We only have two turns left. We only have two turns left. We can't put out a Tapu Lily because it's a GX. There we go. 
that was lucky. Ah, uh, might as well. Twenty nine cards. Three Cronidos. No rescue stretcher. Do I have a rescue stretcher? Nope. Ah, uh, I'm probably gonna lose this game. A hundred percent. Don't even have a Rampardos. Unless I have a Focus Sash and a Rampardos the next turn, I might be able to turn it around. No, not possible. <laughs> not possible. We don't even have a tag team. If he has a tag team, I can strike one and strike one for the home run, you know? But he, does, he doesn't have one, so I need to do two strikes, and he only needs to do another strike after this turn. I'm gone, and he has a Guzma. Oh, there we go. I'm gone. In this turn, I thought he was going to kill this one. Well, that's it. This deck is not that good, because... Oh, he didn't kill me. Dude, that was close. He, did, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't know that his turn ends after checking his, you know, after checking his deck. I'm gonna switch back into this one, and then I'm gonna evolve to. Uh, there's no point evolving. You know, he's probably going to evolve back. There's just no point evolving. Um, I could kill one right now, actually. 30. No, I can't. Ah. Oh, wait, I can. Oh, I can kill one right now. Thank God. <laughs> and I have a Focus Sash. Hopefully the next turn I have a Karate Belt. I don't think I have another Karate Belt anymore. Oh, there we go. We used up our Karate Belts. Okay. At least we can kill one more. Heartbreak, because we are done for, basically. A BD? Maybe a BD can help? No, a BD can help. Oh, I should have waited actually, because I have a Focus Sash. Oh, no point because he has a Hypnotoxic Laser. He's gonna kill me and then poison dead. Oh no, my last and final Cronidos died of being poisoned. Poisoned to death, you merciless criminal. Uh, uh -huh. I'm just gonna concede. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna just pause the turn, whatever. Come on, he's playing with us. <laughs> He's waiting for us to concede. Let's be patient. Let's play the patient game. Some people love to test test our patience, you know? So let's just, you know, build our patience. That's the good thing about, you know, when people try to bring you down, use it. You know, only your enemies can make the best of you. You know, it's, it's not possible for us to bring out the best in ourselves. It is possible, but it takes a long time. But with our enemies, with the help of our enemies, it allows us to bring, it allows us to either, it, they can either bring us down to a really low point, or they can bring us really, really high within the span of, you know, within, with, uh, they can fast track our progress, basically. If 
you know, if we react the right way. If they try to get a negative response out of us, take it as a lesson. Whatever they do is, you know, if we learn from it, if we look at it the, in, a, in a bright perspective, then we are always going to get something positive from it. You know, if however toxic someone is to you, if you have a bright perspective, then we can convert that toxicity into our medicine. We can convert it into our, not medicine, but our, you know, our, what do you call it, a supplement for our wisdom to grow, for our uh, personal development. Because that's ultimately what they want to bring down. They want to destroy our personal development. But if we use that, adver that adversity, to our advantage we can thrive you know you can either die or you can thrive in adversity and if you thrive in adversity you will you know you will you will grow by leaps and bounds within seconds you know average people who doesn't have enemies they, they, they it takes a long time to grow on your own if you have a lot of enemies you grow very quickly unless unless you know, unless you have low moments and, you know, you have bad days where you are not able to face them. But if you keep a bright perspective, you can face anyone anytime, you know. So just keep a bright perspective. Everything will be fine. Uh, que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. All right. That's too much on, that's too much on, uh, you know, all of that talk. So as you can see, this Belted Blow deck is not really that effective. Um, I had, I think, three losses and, no, no, two losses and two wins. So this uh, Kranidos, the weak point is Wild Crash has, uh, is too heavy, the attack cost is too heavy. And BD, I, I used it once, I think, I only used it once. BD is not really that effective because it's a supporter card. It really hampers us because it's a supporter. Um, I think I had a melodic. I had a uh, my initial idea was to have a Kranidos, a Porygon Z, and a melodic Energy Grace. So let me show you that Energy Grace. Um, all right. Oh damn it! Sorry about this, guys. There we go. Energy Grace. Once during your turn, you may knock out this Pokemon if you do attach three basic energy cards from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. Bad thing about this card, you need to discard it. You need energy in your discard pile, which means you need a battle compressor or you need uh, 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 you know, the right cards in your hand to be able to, to discard energy cards. And then another bad thing is that your opponent takes an extra prize card each time you do this. So, you know, if they kill a Tapu Lili, they only have to kill two Kranidos. They only have to t kill two Rampardos to get a win. Because if you need a Melotic to charge, basically you need two Melotics to charge two Rampardoses. And, you know, if they kill a Tapu Lili, they only need to kill two Rampardos. But we have a Focus Sash. The good thing about that deck is that the Focus Sash can allow this Rampardos to, to kill four Pokemons if the Focus Sash works, you know, and we don't need a Karate Belt, we don't need a Magurnia, Magurna, uh, we don't need a BD, so that's the good thing about that deck, but, you know, Melotic is not that good because uh, it, it only allows us to, you, you know, you need to, you need to first have energy in your discard pile, and you need to uh, knock it out, which means you need to sacrifice a prize card. And I can't remember what's the next point I wanted to make. <laughs> I can't remember the next point. Mm, yeah, but uh, that that's that deck. I think another variation. Let me show you another variation. Another variation is cast iron charge. I call it cast iron charge. So I charge it with a welder, uh, and I have fire crystal and uh, a lot of uh, professor's letter to get my fire energy, so that I can charge with a welder. 
and I have a Tabulity as well to get a, to get Saint Welder, and then I have this Smeargle to change my uh to switch a basic energy attached to my active Pokemon with a different type of basic energy from my discard pile, which means I also need a battle compressor to make sure my discard pile has fighting energy to switch my fire energy, which has been attached by Welder from my active Rampardos. So as long as I have a Welder, I can charge it by two fire and then I charge a uh, fighting energy from my hand and then I use second coat twice which means I need two smear goals on my bench. So that's the bad thing about this deck is that it needs too many things. It needs, like like the Melotic deck, it needs uh, a smear goal on the bench. It needs an extra Pokemon. Uh, it needs, uh, what do you call that? It needs the Battle Compressor. And it need, for this one, it's even worse because it needs a Welder and it needs the right energies in your hand. If you don't have the right energies in your hand and the right supporter and the right item and the right cards in your discard pile, you're screwed. So this is way too uh, demanding. It's too restricting. So that's why I don't use this one. This one is probably by far the best that I can make out of all of those, all of these wild crash decks, digital crash decks. Um, because it, it, it only features these two cards because it's already these two are, are already stage two. That alone, it, it's a stage. This one is you, you can get it out basically in the first turn, but you can't charge it. So it's basically a stage two. And sometimes you, even in the first turn, you can't get this one out. So, you know, it's still very annoying. It's still very slow. So I have no idea how to get this charged really quickly. It's just really hard. Maybe a uh, volt, uh, Ele Electro GX might do the trick because Electro GX allows you to knock it out to attach five energies to your Pokemon at a cost of two price cards. That might work. I don't know. It might be worse than Melotic. It might be the same. Uh, but for now, this is my best bet. So hope you enjoyed that deck. It's called Belted Blow slash Digital Crash. And look at this uh, Porygon Z. I love this Pokemon. It looks so unique. It looks so original. You know, it's so different from Porygon 2 and Porygon 1. I mean, Porygon. Porygon Z. Okay, that's all for this deck. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to review a new deck the next time. It's called, if you're interested, it's called Spiteful Injection. So tune in for the next deck. Uh, there are a few variations for the deck as well. Uh, another variation is called Explosive Stinger. It features Double V and um, what's it called? Naganadel. So let me just briefly show it right now because I'm a bit excited by that deck. So it features uh, this one, Naganadel's Injection and Double's Revenge Blast. Spiteful Injection. All right, uh, that's all for this video. Please like, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful, if you find it interesting, if you want to watch more, or if you want to learn more combos, um, you know, learn to build your own deck. Keep watching my videos and keep uh, tuning in because we are here to show you more and more combos, to show you more and more ways to have more fun in this Pokemon TCGO game. Tune in the next, uh, tune in for the next episode, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Have a nice day. Two.